before any speech I ever make, I always acknowledge my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he said if you don't acknowledge him, he's not going to acknowledge you. And I also want to acknowledge my wife, Julie, because she's in this fight with me. And I also want to acknowledge all of you and thank you for being here, because uh, together we're going to win this thing. And I say together, because you know, I'm running against a guy that doesn't know anything about togetherness. He's seen to know about separation. But I want him to know that in the great book that I read, it says a house divided cannot stand. And so I'm not going to let him divide my house. And all of you are part of my house. Because I said God is a good God, is he not? And uh, the other day I heard him say that uh, to be a senator, you have to know some stuff. So I wanted to tell him some stuff he didn't know. Because in that debate, y'all saw he didn't know a lot of stuff. And he decided at one time to become Scooby-Doo. Y'all saw that. So they asked him if he would vote for Biden in 2024, and he said, oh, oh, oh no, and I said, yeah. But he don't know that at this time right now, God prepared me for this moment. And I'm going to explain to you guys what happened, because I thought I was this football player. But no, 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 God has something else in plan for me. Because I grew up in that little town, y'all heard of it, Riceville, Georgia. And I tell everyone, if you got one year to live, move to Wrightsville. That year's forever. Same old, same old. And I also grew up with a speech impediment. So for four years of my life, I never went out for a recess. Four years of my life, I never took a, never spoke in a classroom. My mom said I was big bone to make me feel good because I was fat. So I didn't feel good about myself. But God had a plan. And that plan he had was to get me to the University of Georgia. And Georgia is in the SEC championship game, are they not? Georgia is in the SEC championship game. So he got me a chance to go to the University of Georgia. And then he got me a chance to win a Heisman Trophy. Think about this. Now, that's from this kid, and y'all probably realize that I'm black. I didn't know I was black until I got up here today, but I'm black. And I got a chance to go to the 1992 Olympic bobsled Represent the United States of America, and there's absolutely no snow here in Georgia. Think about it. I got a chance to be on that team, and I got a chance to build. This was so funny. I got a chance to build so many different things that God has done for me. But this what was so funny. He said, I wasn't ready yet. God said, you're not ready yet. And I didn't know what he was doing to me. And then all of a sudden, uh, somebody said, I had a mental problem. Think about this now. This is a young man never drank before in my life. Guys, I never tasted beer. Never had any alcohol, never taken a drug, never had any medicine in this body. And they said, yeah, yeah, that was a good thing. But then all of a sudden they said I had a mental problem. Like, wait a minute, how in the world could Herschel Walker have a mental problem? I'm talking about myself in third person, but I know that. So I decided to go to this hospital out in California. So I went to this hospital out in California. I go, whoa, these people here are crazy. <laughs> and they're crazy. I'm not like them. And then, from my upbringing, what my mom and dad taught me, from my Lord Jesus, that we all fall short of the glory of God. That we start working on ourselves. And stop looking at the plank, uh, the dust in my brother's eye, but look at the plank in my own. So I got washed in the blood of Jesus at that time. And my life blossomed. And God said, you're ready now. And so all of a sudden, I started watching television. And I'm telling you, don't be watching TV. Because it was totally confusing. Because I started watching a man on TV, and I heard him say, America need to apologize for its whiteness. And America need to apologize for its whiteness. And I said, wait, 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 wait. The, the Bible I read, God doesn't know anything about the color of your skin. God knows about your heart. That's what he knows. He knows about your heart. And then he said, you know, you can't serve the military and God at the same time. And then he called all men and women in blue, and I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? And so I said, wait, wait, wait. It is time for us to get 
men in Washington that's going to do right by the people that elected them to go to office, that love the United States of America, that love the Constitution. You got to get people that's not afraid to speak the truth, not go to Washington to do whatever somebody tells you to do. Because I'm going to tell you, God don't want no politician. Because y'all know I'm not a politician. Y'all seen politicians like, that look like this right here. Y'all never seen politicians that look like that. He didn't want that. But God wanted the warriors that's going to go up there and tell people the right truth. Because my father told me no, he meant no. And then when I got too big for my britches, he said, boy, if you don't like the rules underneath my roof, you leave my house. So we need to get people in Washington that say, if you don't like the rules of the United States of America, you can leave. We're not, we're not asking you to stay. But no, no, no. But let me go to this right here. So all of a sudden, this man that said to be a senator, you have to know stuff. I'm trying to figure out what does he know. Well, first of all, he voted four times to get rid of the Keystone Pipeline. Does he not know the definition of enemy? Because they're going to our enemy to ask for energy to help us. And an enemy of people that don't like you. I don't know if y'all know that. Those are people that don't like you, but they also didn't know the definition of a woman. And he is a minister, a man out of cloth. And if he had looked it up in that great book that I read, it said a man and a woman. He should have known the definition of a woman, but he didn't know that. But he tried to fool you also by telling you that a man can get pregnant. No, he can't get pregnant. He can't get pregnant, so they're trying to lie to you. So I'm going to tell you about these lies. And this is the reason I decided to run. Because I'm going to tell you this little story I've been telling for a long time. It's about this guy that died early in life. He died early in life, and as he got to heaven, St. Peter met him at the pearly gates. And St. Peter said, sir, you're here a little bit early right now, that your name ain't on the road. So you're the only one in history that's going to get an opportunity to decide where you want to go. He said, I'm going to take you to heaven, and I'm going to take you to hell, and you get to determine where you like to be. So he puts him in this elevator. He takes him all the way down to hell, and the doors open up, and there's a party going on. He sees some of his friends down there. He's having a great time. And after a couple of hours, St. Peter came to him and said, uh, you ready to go? You ready to go? And the guy said, well, we got to leave now. I said, yes, you got a decision to make. So he puts him in his elevator, takes him all the way up to heaven. They get to heaven and there are people floating around on clouds, having a good time. And after a couple of hours, St. Peter came to him and said, have you made your mind up? Have you made your mind up? And the guy said, well, St. Pete, I hate to tell you this, but I think I want to go to hell. That that seemed like my type of place. St. Peter said, are you sure? He said, yeah. So he puts him in his elevator, sends him all the way back down to hell. The doors open up now. It's hot. People are crying and they're miserable. And the guy said, wait a minute, wait a minute. A couple of hours ago when I was here, there was a party going on. And Satan shows up and said, a couple of hours ago, I was campaigning. <laughs> well, the reason I'm telling you that right now, the guy I'm running against the campaigning, he's lying to you. And he's a man out of cough. And he's lying to you telling you that this is a new normal. He's lying to you telling you that everything is okay. No, it's not. He's the reason that crime is the way it is because he called all men and women in blue thugs and bullies. Now the morale is down. Recruitment is down. This is the worst time in America to be a law enforcement officer. Because people have forgotten about their people too. They've forgotten about right now they have families. Their moms and dads, their brothers and sisters. But yet we got people in Washington that call them names. They got the morale down. They continue to vote for judges that don't believe in no cash bail. And I'm like, man, the good book that I read, the Bible even said with Adam and Eve, you have this place here that says you have total freedom, but if you touch and eat from this tree here, you'll surely die. They were held to responsibility. But we got people in Washington that don't want to hold people responsible for what they're doing. But that's the guy I'm running against. The guy I'm running against do not even want to apologize. Because he even said, and it's on the pulpit talking about me. On this pulpit, he said it because I'm talking about him. I'm talking about Jesus. That I'm talking about him. I'm talking about Martin Luther King. Well, he need to know because he don't know stuff. He need to know he's not Jesus and he's not Dr. King. That's what he need to learn. He's neither one of those people. Because if he was those people, he wouldn't be doing the things to he's doing to those people at this apartment unit. Y'all seen the Columbia Towers. That's a place 99% of the church own that place, but yet he's evicting people for $29. That's what he's evicting for him, and he's making $7,400 a month for his housing allowance. But yet he continues to spend your money 
And think about this. In less than two years, think about what he's done to this country. And people got to ask me why I'm running. I'm running because I got a wolf in sheep's clothing on the pulpit trying to tell you that you're evil people. But it's not going to do it on my watch. Not on my watch because we're good people here. We're good people here. And the way we can become better is we got to come together. The way we can become better, we got to get together and get people like that out of office. Because I'm sick and tired of people saying in Washington that lives in the greatest country in the world today. And all they do is complain and complain. We don't want to hear complaints. We want to hear solutions. That's what I want to do. I want to be a guy that's going to do solutions. And the way I'm getting to the solutions done for you, because I told you about the Keystone Pipeline that he voted four times to get rid of, what I want to do is we start drilling for our own oil and gas on our own here, right here in the United States of America. Because we can do it environmentally friendly. Do y'all not know that? We can do it very well, just as good as anyone. And then when they get to the point that we get to, we want to get to the Green New Deal, I will raise my hand. But we're not at that point yet. We're not there yet, so why are they trying to force into something that we're not ready to go yet? We need to get to what we're doing because they're becoming a national security problem. Think about it. They're going to our enemies. They're going to terrorists. They're going to dictators, asking them to help us. We don't need them to help us. We can help ourselves. We need to get rid of the government and get back to the people. This is about we the people, not we the government. And then, no, 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 no. Let me, let me say this. This is less than two short years. You need to know stuff. He don't know what he said about our men and women in the military, that they, are, they can't serve God in the military at the same time. He's not God, so he don't need to be telling things like that. First of all, you can serve God in the military. God is a good God. And our military was the most lethal fighting force ever assembled was our United States military. But because of people like him and Washington, now they're becoming weak. Because they're talking about pronouns. Yes, they are pronouns. Like, what the heck is a pronoun? Are y'all not sick and tired of this pronoun stuff? I know I'm sick and tired of this pronoun stuff. And then, no, 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 no. What we're going to do is call him a pronoun. He's going to be former senator pronoun. That's his name, former senator pronoun. Because you know what? We don't need to be talking pronouns for our military. Why don't we talk about push-ups and sit-ups? I've been doing a lot of those. Let's talk about that. Let's get out of this pronoun stuff. And then not only that, this is what the guy is doing to us. This is a guy that wants you to vote for him, I'm trying to tell you to vote for him because we need to know stuff. What he need to know is get it out of our school, too. They're bringing this wokeness in our schoolhouse after our little kids because they know we're a little bit too old. We're not going to fall for them taking us down in that elevator, so they're trying to take our little kids down there. They're trying to tell them because you're white, you're an opp you're a, uh, oppressor, and because you're black, you're oppressed. You can't get in. You can't do anything. Well, no, it's not. If you live in the United States of America, you can have that America dream, but you got to get people in Washington that's going to give you that America dream and give you an opportunity, not because of the color of your skin. That's what you need to get back to. Give people the opportunity to do it, and the way you do it is by believing in the people, believing in everybody, and I believe in everybody. And I'm going to tell people this, and I'll tell you this, what my offensive lineman told me one day. They said, Herschel, you follow me, I'm going to take you to the promised land. So I tell all you, you vote for me, I'm going to help us all get to the promised land. Because I believe if we can't get there, if we don't get there together, none of us get there at all. Because I'm not going to say I'm taking part of my family. Because I'm going to tell you something you may not know about me. I got white people in my family. Can you believe that? I even got black people in my family. I know you can't believe that, McKinney. I got Asian. I got all types of people in my family. You know what? We're all mutts, but I love every last one of them. And I'm going to tell you something else. You may be a mutt, too, because 23 and me screwed us all up. So it don't matter about what you are. What it does matter is you're an American. Is that not matter? That's good enough. We're all American, so we need to start fighting for American and quit fighting about color. It don't matter about the color of your skin. We are American. And do we not? And you know what? We're very generous. We're very generous. But what we got to do is get back into our schoolhouse and get that CRT out of our school, critical race theory out of our school. What we need to do is teach our kids how to read and write rather than teaching them about critical race theory. We need to teach them how to spell rather than teaching them about gender ideology. And then we need to get some people in there to protect our kids while they're in the schoolhouse instead of having 87,000 RS agents that's going to go after you. 87,000 RS agents, what do y'all think they're going to do? 
They're going after us, and they know that, but yet they don't want to do that. But we need people with common sense in Washington. That's what I have. I have common sense. So I do know a lot of stuff. I know a whole lot of stuff. And what I do know is we don't need 87,000 IRS agents. I do know that, and I do know this as well. We do need a security border. Y'all know we need a security border. Hey, yes, we do. And they said this border's secured. Can y'all believe that? These people have lost their freaking mind. This border not secured. What it is, you got people coming across this border. You don't see people coming across the border of China, do you? You don't see people coming across the border of Russia, do you? Because they don't want to be in Russia. They don't want to be in China. They want to be in the United States of America because this is the greatest country in the world today, even at we at the point we're at right now. So what we got to do is protect this country. And the way we protect it is by coming together. You can't be separated, protected. Remember, early on, I said a house divided cannot stand. But that's what the left is trying to do. They're trying to divide you with these lies, take you down to that elevator and fool you, tell you this is the new normal. This is not the new normal. But what you need is a champion in Washington. And that's what God said. Hershey is that champion that I've got. He built me up for a time like this. Do y'all think I wanted to be a politician? Guys, I don't even wear suits. The only reason I don't put on a suit test that I can show them I can wear. My neck is too big to be wearing a tie. I'm not wearing a tie, and they know that, but this is what I'm running against. I'm running against this slick preacher, this slick preacher that talks so smooth. Y'all saw what he was saying in that debate, trying to think he can out-talk Herschel Walker. Do y'all really believe this man can beat me in a debate? He had to have something going wrong with him. He don't know him from the school of Ricky Bobby. Yes, you, I am. I'm from that school to Ricky Bobby, and I'm always going to finish first because he's a one-trick pony. He thought he could say things and fool me. Y'all heard him talk about how he would think it's okay to kill a baby. All the way up to nine months, he's saying it's okay to kill a baby. He even said if a baby survived an abortion, he would deny that baby medical care. And he is a man out of cloth. Let's think about who we got representing us in Washington. It is time for him to go. He need to know stuff where he don't know it's time for him to go. And what we're going to tell him, don't let that door hit you in the bite side of you walk out of the people's office. We need leaders in Washington that are going to do the right thing by the people. You're the people, so you got the voices, though. That's why you got to vote. That's why I'm going to tell you all, get out and vote. Get out and vote and tell 10 of your friends to get out and vote. If you don't have any friends, make some friends and tell them to get out and vote. This is one of the most important elections we're going to have in our lifetime. So what we got to do, we got to get out and correct this right now. Because we got people in Washington that become weak. Have they talked about those 10 people that was killed in Afghanistan? Have they talked about people that were killed in Afghanistan? That should show that we were weak. You think leaders around Washington, around this world, not looking at us? Looking at us, telling us that we're weak. Well, I'm telling you right now, America don't have weak people. We have strong people. We have people that have come so far. And think about this. They're trying to take you back. They're trying to take you down in that elevator and tell you that this is a new normal. It is not the new normal. It is not the new normal. And let me tell you about this Green New Deal. This Green New Deal, it is not as it's exciting, isn't it? They're talking about all this Green New Deal stuff. It's very exciting. And I'm going to tell you right now. I told you early on, when they get to the point that we can get to this Green New Deal, I will raise my hand. We're not there yet because I was talking to some farmers the other day. This is what was so funny about these farmers. Y'all know this is a big agriculture state. Y'all know that, don't you? We do all this farming, all this agriculture. I'm one of these country boys. So all of a sudden I asked somebody, what will a combine cost today? Y'all know what they told me? They say a used combine costs $500,000. And I go, whoa, that's a lot of money. And I said, what would an electric combine cost? They said about $1.8 million. I said, whoa, that's a whole lot of money right there. But this is what was so funny about it. They said you can only use it for two hours, then you have to charge it. So it won't work. And I was like, guys, so it won't work. So why are we here talking about it? Why don't we get back? He's not working, but he's doing okay. He's doing okay. He's doing the best he can. That's the reason he got to go. The best you can don't work. They need to put the A team in. The B team had enough time to be in there. Now it's time for the A team to go in and play. And that's why I said, put me in the game, coach. I'm ready to play. I've been ready to play since I started out, and I'm ready to get in the game and change this attitude. We got people in Washington that not doing the right thing, and it is time that we change it. But the way we change it by getting out to vote. So we don't just show up. We got to do what the right for the people. And as I said, God loves us. He loves us all. But this is our problem. We have people. We have people in Washington that have forgotten about this flag, the United States flag. And then they continue to have people that want to debate whether you're going to kneel or you're going to sit. But that won't happen on my watch.
Those too many people have sacrificed their lives. They've sacrificed everything for this flag, for this anthem. And what you got to do is respect it all. And once you start disrespecting, that's when the problems happen. And that's what we let them get away with. Let them disrespect the flag. And I said, no, no, no. It won't happen on my watch. No more. We're trying to get back to what is right. This is a country of immigrants, but we also a country of laws. That's the reason that we would got to where we're at today. And now they want to change us. They want to change. They want to take us back because I remember Archie Barker. Yeah, I remember Archie Barker. Y'all remember Archie Barker, too. And now Archie Barker couldn't be on the air today because now people are too sensitive. Let me tell you what. Sensitivity has nothing to do with what's happening in this country. Right now, crime is up. Crime is up because we got a weak senator like Senator Warnock want to call all men thugs and bullets. Crimes are up because we got people like that want to release people from jail. Well, it's not going to happen on my watch. So I want to tell you all, this is what we got to do. Get your friends and go out and vote. Tell everyone to go out and vote. It is time we get this right. And the way we get it right, by putting me in the Senate. Because I'm not going to dance and sing for nobody. I never have and never will. Because I represent the great people of Georgia. I've lived here my whole life. I owe so much to the great people of Georgia, to the state of Georgia. Do y'all think I'm going to let you down? I scored one time, and I can score again. I can promise you that. I won one championship. I win again. I don't want to win trophies. I want to win national championships. That's what I like, national championship. That's what Georgia's going to win this coming year, a national championship. They're going to win a championship. That's what I want us to be, national champions. We can't do it with Senator Warnock in the office. This vampire thing is good. If they had played the whole thing, they would have known the vampire thing had to do with uh, having uh, faith. They didn't want to play the whole thing. They're lying to you, taking you down to this elevator. And I'm going to tell you right now, don't let them take you in this elevator. But what we got to do, come together. Come together as one. God is a good God. God bless you guys. Thank you guys now.